Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines Tuning Marine. In this video I'm building a 5.7 liter Mercruiser V8 and um, what I'm doing is I'm checking my main bearing clearances and uh, I'm on the last one. I've already done uh, 5, 4, 3, and 2 and I'm now working on 1. So what I've done is I'm measuring the, I put the bearings together, torque down the caps, and then I measure the clearance or measure the uh, the inside diameter of these bearings and on this one I got and sometimes you might be off by one ten thousand of an inch from front to back I just use the uh, larger of the two numbers because that's going to be a larger clearance so um, and what you're trying to do is find out your, your largest clearance not the smallest or even the smallest is important particularly you're worried about the large the clearance being too much so this measurement was uh, 2.4412 when I had the bearing cap torqued down on this one Number four measured 2.4407. Number five, uh, three measured 2.4405. Number two measured 2.4413. And number one measured 2.4413 also. So let me show you how I did that. So here's my dial board gauge. And I've got it set to where, first you have to find a, a reference point. So I've got it set for 2.430 is my base number. That's the, that's the setting on this micrometer, 2.430. So what I do is I measure the uh, clearance on this bearing, and it will tell me the, the clearance. Let me see if I can get this done. Let me get to do this one-handed. So as I was saying, if I rock this thing back and forth, you can see that my clearance on this one was 11. Point I would say 11.25, 11.3, I'm going to say 11.25. So there's 11 and then 0.2, halfway between the two notches, about, I'm going to, okay, now it's about 11.3. So let's say 11.3. So that's 11.3 thousandths. And right now it's going back to the other one, so. All right, I'm going to stay with 11.3. So if you take 11.3 thousandths, and add that to 2.430 and come up with this number, 2.4413. So those are the, the uh, inside diameter clearances of all, or inside diameter dimensions of all these bearing caps, or these bearings when they're in, installed and torqued down. These, these bolts are torqued to 77 foot-pounds each. Right, now that I've done this, I'm going to take the crank and measure its journals with a micrometer, and I'll write the crank diameter over here. So I've written the clear the uh, bearing ID over here. I'm gonna write the crank write the crank OD over here. That minus that will be my clearance and I'll write it on top of here. Or I might rub it on the front here. I might I'm gonna write it somewhere with a sharpie. And that way I've documented what the clearances are for this engine. And then once it's all documented and written down I'll just take a picture of it and I know what my clearances are. So that's, uh, that's how I check the clearances, the main bearing clearances. I don't use plastic gauge anymore, it's a waste of time. This, this tells me when I have a problem, I know what the problem is. I know it's either my main bearing cap is out or my journal on my crankshaft is out or whatever. So it's a much, um, may not be any faster, I think it is, but um, it's certainly more accurate and more um, telling when you have a problem, you know what to do. You need to take the block back and have it reworked, or you need to get new bearings, or you need to get your crankshaft reworked. You know exactly what you got to do when you use this type of method. Plastic gauge, you don't know. You know you got a problem, but you don't know what caused the problem. All right, so now I'm about to um, get, get the crankshaft, measure its, uh, the outside diameter of the journals, and see what the difference is. Now finish all my measurements from my main bearing um, OD of the crankshaft, and I wrote them on the crank on the uh, block. So on this one, I had 2.4390, and I measured both on one side of the bearing and the other, or excuse me, one side of the journal and the other side of the journal. I'll show you the journal. So I measure, this is say your number one, I measure on this side and I measure on that side. That's just smudging. So I measure on this side and I measure on that side, and I just get, I get two numbers. So if I wrote down, if I wrote down two numbers over here, that's what I that's what the two numbers mean. The slash is the last digit chain. So that would be zero slash zero. So in this case, that number minus that number gives me my clearance, 0 0.0022, and that's within specification. All right, going to number four, point two four four zero seven minus that number gives me my clearance. That's within specification. I think the minimum is 0 0.0012. Again, that number minus that number gives me my clearance, 0 0.0014 and 15. 
So I had like, again, I have two digits on the top. So I get two different numbers for my bottom number. So again, it's, it's greater than 0 0.0012. So it's within specification. Next number, this is number two, 2.4413. And two point minus two point four three nine two slash one gives me two numbers point zero zero two one slash two two. These are barely within. Well, no, I take it back. Number two is within specification. Point zero zero two seven is the max on number two. On this one, this is number one, two point four four one three minus two point four three nine zero gives me a result of point zero zero two three. This one is two ten thousandths over specification. This, uh, the production limit of the production limit on the five point seven is point zero zero two one. I'm two ten thousandths over that number. Um, honestly, though, your ten thousandths, two ten thousandths over, is so small that it's not worth um, sending this crank back to have it machined again. I mean, I could have made a mistake in measuring two ten thousandths. So. That's within, if I'm within five, ten thousandths, half of a thousandth of, a, of the clearance, I'm good with that. So, um, like, I said, like I said, I got all these other bearings are good, and I've got one that's two ten thousandths out. That is not enough to justify uh, having this block remachined or having the crank remachined. So, I'm calling this one good. I'm going to, um, this block has not been washed. That's why I'm videotaping these numbers now, so I'll have them on record, because when I wash it, it will uh, probably wash these numbers off. Even though they're with a black sharpie, um, I use the uh, I use shout um, straight undi undiluted shout to clean these engines. It's a great degreaser, and I hope it's biodegradable. I don't know if it is or not, but um, it sure cleans my hands good. So um, the block main bearing clearances are now established. Um, I'm now going to do the rods, and what I do is I'm going to measure this crankshaft, measure the rod journals here, there, here, and there. And I measure here and there. I measure both sides. You got two rods. One run, one runs right here, and one runs on the, next to it. So I'm going to be measuring uh, in two two places on each each journal. And um, I'll have to write it down somewhere. I'll probably write it down. Um, I don't know. I'll find something to write it down. But anyway, once I measure this, then I'll get my rods out and put the bearings in and measure them and check my clearances that way. And once I have all my clearances checked, I don't have to plastic gauge it. I just wash things and assemble it. I don't have to worry about checking my clearances again because I've already done it. And I know that uh, they're within specification before I ever put the thing together. I like doing it that way. Uh, plastic gauge feels like it slows me. It just feels um, like it takes forever to put an engine together with plastic gauge because you're, you're making progress and you have to, you have to put plastic gauge in, squeeze it, take the bearing back apart, scrape it off, clean it up. Put the bearing back on again it's just it's just a lot of uh, to me it's just a lot of trouble for, for what you get um having said that if you're a beginner and uh, haven't built engines before um you're probably not going to go out and buy a uh a dial board gauge like i did uh, i'm trying to find where i put it but um uh, i've paid about 120 dollars for that tool so um, if you're a beginner, plastic gauge is probably okay. Just keep in mind that if your plastic gauge indicates that something's out of whack, that you got too much clearance or too little clearance, then you're going to have to take it to a machine shop and let them figure out what to do with it. And that's fine. It just, um, how, actually, they may have made a mistake and, and you caught it. You'll have to take it back and let them fix it. That may be the case. So um, for beginners, go ahead and use plastic gauge. Uh, you don't need to buy this tool that I have for uh, checking these engines. But, I'm doing it in, I'm trying to do this more in a production mode. So I need the tools to make this thing faster. And uh, every day I found, I figure out new things, little things I can do to make this, uh, to get into together faster. So that wraps up this video. Um, please subscribe to my channel. I'm on a subscriber push. I need uh, about 300 more to get to the thousand subscriber mark where uh, YouTube, you can apply for monetization through YouTube when you get to a thousand subscribers. I don't know how many people know that, but 1,000 subscribers is the magic number, and I think I'm close to 700 now, so I need 300 more. So please subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching, and hope you enjoyed the video.